Analyzing quadratic functions. Why is it that we study quadratic functions? Well, um, you may think that it's just to make your life miserable, and that of course is true in my case, but other teachers would like to tell you that you can model different real life situations with quadratics. For example, any type of projectile motion, a baseball, a football, anything that you throw will take on a parabola, a wide one or a, or a deep one. Uh, fencing, when you figure out how much fence to use around, um, around your, your pen, you would need to use some quadratics with it. For revenue, when you have a price, you increase the price, therefore you sell less things and the combination will turn out to be a parabola. And we're trying to figure out the maximum area for, for fencing against something. That's all parabola. And of course, there's more applications. Now, the parabola has some major points or major parts to it. And one of the major things is the vertex. The vertex is denoted H and K because H is the X of the vertex and K is the Y of the vertex. The H actually is where the, uh, there's a vertical line that divides the parabola into two equal halves and that's called the axis of symmetry. And therefore it has the equation X equals H because as you remember X equals something gives you the equation of a vertical line. It also has places where it cuts the X axis and that's the X intercepts. But we also call them zeros and we call them roots. And lastly and perhaps not so importantly we have the Y intercept where the parabola crosses the Y axis and I have an f at zero because that's how you find the y-intercept for anything. You set x equals to zero and you figure out your y-value. So let's look at some of these things. How do we recognize a parabola? How do we recognize a quadratic or a parabola from an equation? Hmm, how do we recognize? A clue, a clue, a clue. A clue? Where's the clue? There's the clue. Then what do I need when I find my clue? My handy dandy? Notebook. Notebook. So let me write. Where's my marker? Thank you, Victoria. So when it's expanded, the highest exponent on the variable must be 2. Hmm. I really wish I could see your face right now. Okay, so let's see. Now, Victoria's going to help us too. Let's look at this one. Is this an expanded form? Yes, it's just adding and subtracting. So therefore, the highest exponent is 2, and that is a quadratic function. That's great. Okay. Now, this one, I've got 2x plus 4y. This is also expanded. It's also expanded, but this is not to the power 2. Therefore, this is not a quadratic. <laughs> this one, I have x and x. This is not expanded. So if I were to multiply x times x, I will end up with x squared. And that would be the highest value, so that it's definitely um, a quadratic. And this one over here, I have x minus 4, the whole thing squared. So when I expand this bracket, I'm going to end up with x squared in expanded form. So that is also uh, a quadratic. And this one over here, when I expand this x squared, I'm going to have a squared, and that's good. But then I'm going to multiply by another x, and that means that it's going to be x to the power of 3, and that makes it not a quadratic. So this 3, we could recognize because when it expanded, the highest exponent on the variable would be equal to 2. So, now, how do we recognize a quadratic from a table of values? Very easy. You may remember this first. When you do the first differences, why is this minus 4 and not positive 4? Here's an easy way to remember. How do you go from 15 to 11? I go down by 4. So that's minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. All my first differences are the same. If the first differences are constant, then it's a linear function. And for a quadratic, you check the first differences. So from 6 to 1, I go to minus 5. From 1 to minus 2, I go down by 3. From minus 2 to minus 3, I go down by 1. But from minus 3 to minus 2, I went up by 1. And then up by 3 and up by 5. These guys are not constant, so I check again for the second differences, which means I'm going to do the differences on the differences. And that will be 
for minus 5 to 3, I go up by 2, up by 2, up by 2, and therefore, I give it to And therefore, they are constant. And if they're constant, my second difference says this would be a quadratic function. And I will do a better Blue's Clues lesson later in the future.